We are here today in the all new BMW X2 uh, doing our stage one speaker upgrade, which is gonna replace all of the tweeters and mid-ranges throughout the vehicle. We have a tweeter and mid-range in the front door, tweeter and mid-range in the rear door. We got a pair up on the dash as well. And we're gonna show you how to get to all that. If you don't know what our stage one speaker upgrade is, it's a plug and play upgrade for your car. Doesn't require any modification, no cutting, no grinding, no splicing of wires. Um, that's gonna give you a huge improvement in sound quality and sound clarity. And the way we do that is using much nicer materials in the factory. We have an aluminum tweeter, which is just harsh bouncing off all of the plastic surfaces in the car. Um, with the factory Harman Kardon system, it's that aluminum. Uh, we go to a silk dome tweeter in our setup, uh, which is much more natural, plays a bit better with the materials in here. And then we go to a uh, Kevlar weave component on our mid-range uh, versus the factory uh, paper cone. So just a big improvement all around. For those of you watching this video with the standard hi-fi system, so you don't have the Harman Kardon, which means there's no tweeter up here, you just have the mid-range in the door, we're supplying you a coaxial mid-range and tweeter, uh, which means it's basically a 100 millimeter mid-range that has a center mounted tweeter in it uh, that goes here. So you're getting all the effect of a tweeter just without having to add any additional pod in or anything like that. So as you're watching this video, anything we're referencing in regards to this tweeter pod, popping it out, removing it, just ignore that and pay attention purely to the mid-range install as all you have to do is pop the door panel off to get to that. You don't have to touch this tweeter pod. The other thing we have with us today is our Bav Sound Toolkit. This is an option at checkout. It includes everything that you need to get into these door panels. So as you can see, it's uh, shifted a little bit on us here. I've, uh, I've actually been working on the car already. So when it comes to you, it'll be perfect and good to go. Um, it you know, includes plastic panel removal tools, some metal tools, pick tool, little angle driver, everything that you will need. Um, and the first thing we're gonna start with on this door panel is our plastic panel removal tool as we need to get the uh, door pull cover off as we got two screws here to get to as well as two on the bottom of the door panel before we can remove it. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is get this off here. There's a series of, it's a sort of metal latching clip. Um, there's four of them along here and then one at the end that sort of slides in. So we wanna start from this upper surface up here. And at the bottom of it, um, you'll just kind of take the tool. It's gonna to be hard to capture on camera, but you can feel the seam in between this sort of leather style material and the black plastic that we're gonna pry at. Um, so we'll just kind of get this in there and you'll just pry outwards here. You can see that starts to come out. And then you can, either with the tool or with your fingers, just move down from there. Sometimes the tool is a little easier as we get going. Again, prying directly outwards. You can see the shape of the tool just as you press it in will kind of pop up. So, as that's getting there, you just wanna come out. And then I, I want to see if you can capture that there. There's this little metal tab. I'll give it a second as I know the camera takes time to focus. That's back here. Just make sure you don't bend that outwards as that does create tension. You'll just kind of wiggle it free. And then you can see all the metal clips have stayed on this here. And those latch onto these four plastic bits there. And with that out of the way, it gives us access to our two screws that are down at the end of here. It's a T20 bit um, screw. So we'll use our bit driver as well as our T20 bit. Um, and you'll get in there. This rear one, uh, I just took that out. It's, it's pretty far in there. The tool reaches it no problem. It may not come out. Um, easily just as it's so far down in there. So even when it's fully unscrewed, it might sit in there. That's fine. Just uh, leave it there. It will come off with the door panel. Just make sure you've backed that out all the way. So then we've got our one more T20 screw up here. Again, there's one there, one up here that we'll take out. And this one did come out for us. Um, and then we also have down at the bottom of the door panel, 
Uh, there's one T20 here. Again, going to be hard to capture on the camera, but if you run your hand down, there's a channel it goes into. You can easily feel it. So there's one T20 here, one T20 here, and then the two up here. So a total of four. Uh, and I'm not going to make you watch me remove these bottoms, bottom ones. So we're going to get all four of these out, come back, and I'll show you how to pop the door panel off. So in addition to the four screws in the door panel we had mentioned, BMW has actually hidden one more T20 screw over here behind this little panel. The way that pops out, you wanna pry from this upper edge as there's a little sort of latch that goes down in there. So you can see it's got on the design, I'll give that a second to focus. Um, this goes into a little slot and then that clips into place. So again, I'll show you that one more time. You want to pry from the top edge. The bottom edge won't work. Comes out real easy. Just get our tool behind that. That's out. I've already removed the T20 bolt there. A little bit of movie magic. And we are ready to remove the door panel. From here, it's just held on by a series of plastic clips around the perimeter. So what I like to do, uh, you can start on the inside or the outside. For the sake of the video, I'll show you from the outside. Sometimes it's nice to start from the inside, just in case there is any little scuff that happens on the paint. It's not as visible. With the plastic tool, really shouldn't happen either way. And you'll just kind of get this in here and wedge behind. And what we're looking for is trying to locate where a clip is so you can apply pressure near that. As once that starts, releasing let's see it will be tight before you get one to go so there we go you just kind of make your way around the panel once you've got a few going you can just reach in with your fingers and pull the rest out All right, so with all of the clips here, you'll notice the door panel is just kind of dangling. Um, we'll have to lift upwards. Uh, you know what, BMW is using a slightly older design, so rather than slotting in, this has a series of clips as well, so we'll pull directly out up top. So you can see if you want to come over and show them that, Kobe. Um, we have these little slots here that align with these metal clips up here. So you'll just pull directly outwards on that. All right, so with the door panel popped off um, and it's sitting here, you could go through and remove all these connections as well as the door handle pull and actually remove the panel. What we like to do is just grab a cardboard box, a towel, or if you have a really soft uh, workspace, you could just set it on the ground. Um, we're just going to rotate the panel downwards uh, after removing the door handle pull, which is done simply by, you can see in here, it's kind of slotted in. Just pop that over. And then towards the back, it's got a little latch up at the front. You'll just lift upwards. And that just pops out, allowing the door panel to, and then you want to be gentle as the wiring still attached, just rotate and sit right down there out of the way. So with that done, it's time to get our tweeter out. So the first thing we can do here, go ahead and unplug the tweeter and unplug the mid-range while we're in there and then get to the pod. This is just held in um, again by a series of clips going around it. So if you pull directly outwards, um, sort of, I don't know if you can catch this back edge here. It's also slotted into a gasket right, right in there. So we'll just kind of move it inwards and out. Now you can go ahead and remove this whole piece. What I recommend doing just as it's not impossible, but you know, it's a little bit of work to get it realigned to the gasket and back over there. We can actually just work with it right here. So with the panel or the tweeter sail panel loose and out of the slot here on the back, there's this foam piece. You'll just go ahead and lift that out which it has the tweeter wiring running through it. So you can kind of snake, I'll try to show this on camera You can kind of snake that out of there. Set that foam piece to the side, at which point we have access to the tweeter here. 
which you're just going to pull directly outwards. Which pops out here. As you can see, it's the same size as our tweeter, albeit a much lower quality. Uh, we have that aluminum uh, dome, which just really doesn't play well with the materials in the car versus our silk dome tweeter. And so we'll go ahead, take our 25 millimeter machined housing aluminum tweeter and just pop that right back in where that factory one was. And then the way we're gonna do it is we have our wiring set up a little different than the factory, you'll just run it down um, inside the foam. It doesn't actually have to come out around the back. So we will just come in. Be a little tricky to get the foam realigned. Again, just pull that wiring downwards. And with the foam back in place. All right, with it time to now pop this back in, the foam's in place, wiring is running out the bottom towards our mid-range. Um, we played a, a little bit th with this and it's nearly impossible to get this gasket lined up with our other, it's sort of a window seal in the way here. The good news is this window seal that's right here just lifts right up and out. You can just apply pressure below it, kind of run the whole way down. You'll see it gets, it's a little bit wider and that just lifts out, it's just that channel here. Again, this felt side goes towards the window. We'll set that out of the way, at which point it's very easy to line this up. So we'll just come in here and slot that firmly into place. You can see that's all aligned perfectly just as it was before. We'll grab our window seal again. Again, felt side towards the outside of the car. You can kind of get it started here. You can feel it line into place, slide it under there. Back down here, just as it was before. Uh, then there's one clip which, or that you have to pop back in on the front. I'll show you how to do that. We move the lighting back around to the other side and we'll get that mid-range installed as well. All right, so we're about to do our mid-range install and we just need to finish up the tweeter here. Uh, there's just one little tab where, again, with make sure that foam is firmly seated in there, push upwards, and that sort of sits into place just how it was before. Depending on when you're watching this video, uh, your tweeter up here uh, will either have this in line or you'll have to install it. Um, if it's after, early 2020, uh, this is gonna come in line on the tweeter. If it's not, this filter harness does just need to be popped into place. Um, it is important on this tweeter that this is in line, whether you had to connect it just like that or it's built in. Again, after early 2020, it should just be built in as we did a revision there. With that done, the tweeter's all ready to go besides plugging it in. It is time to tackle our mid-range, uh, which BMW has conveniently made a T20 as well. So you're using that same bit as you used for the uh, screws holding the door panel on. And again, we already unplugged both connections from the mid-range. So that will just lift out here. Uh, you can see the difference in the factory mid-range and ours here. So just uh, pretty substantial in that regards. Especially just in the material difference, we're also using an inverted surround, which lets us get a little bit more travel on everything compared to the factory mid-range. So the one thing we're gonna be doing slightly differently is our wiring is going to run behind our mid-range and we're gonna have to run it out and back up here with the rest of this wiring. So what I like to do is just on this seal here, you'll kinda you'll peel that back and you'll have room to run that through. So you'll just take the wiring,
and then that will get run back out through here. This black goop is very sticky, so don't worry about that reattaching as it's, it's going to go back on easily. Yeah, I don't know if you can come in on this at all, Kobe. So we got our one plug there. And we do need both ran through. So with both of the plugs out here, we can go ahead and get this lined up. And I'll say this now, and I'll remind you guys again in a minute, it's very important that this wiring is pulled tight so that it doesn't interfere with the window mechanism. When you're seeing this video, the mid-ranges you will get, it's gonna have a full form foam gasket on the back. Um, those weren't ready today for this video. Uh, so this is what we were using for this, which does work fine, but it's gonna be easier for you guys. You'll see there's just this thick gasket on the back here. So the mid-range ears are not spaced evenly. Um, so the two ears that are closer together uh, go upwards like this and align with the screw holes. And we will grab a screw here and get that started. I've actually got one more on my bit driver here. And you don't want to go tight on these yet as we need to, sort of similar to putting a wheel on a car, we'll go around and snug those down evenly. Um, emphasis on snug, you really don't have to go tight on these screws. Right, so that third screw in and we will just go around here and you just need to go snug. Again, notice I'm just using my fingertips, kind of going circular in motion. Emphasis on snug, not tight. Uh, if you go too tight, it can distort the basket on the mid-range and can cause sound quality issues for you. So again, just go around, snug, snug, snug. So with this wiring pulled through here, it's important, you know, you don't want to yank so hard that you damage the leads, but make sure there's no slack hanging out there that would get caught in the window. And then you can actually just push in and that black sort of adhesive uh, that they're using will grab everything. At which point it's time to connect the wiring. Uh, obviously this plug goes to the factory lead here, which same as the factory mid-range, this is a uh, it's not quite full range as it doesn't have the sub frequencies, but it is both the mid and tweeter frequencies. It runs through this, um, and then the black plug goes to our tweeter. So that's all connected. At this point, uh, what you'll want to do, you'll want to put the radio on and just play it. We're not listening for sound quality, we're just making sure both the tweeter and mid range are playing correctly. And then the other thing we can do, there's a couple little zip ties included with your order. You just kind of take the wiring here, you're gonna tuck this back there, and we'll just get all the excess together over here and zip tied out of the way just so that's not moving around as we're putting the door panel back on. Not my pretty is the kind of job I'm trying to do this quick for you guys while we're on footage, but you can obviously take your time a little more here. All right, so it is now time to pop the door panel back on. Um, so we're gonna pause here and I'm gonna get that set up and we'll show you what to do. All right, so we didn't disconnect any of the wiring, so there's nothing to worry about there. We do have to reconnect the door handle, which is done. There's a little uh, tab. I don't know if we'll be able to capture that on camera that this sort of slots into. So this just goes up into there, lines up, pushes down. You can pull on this. 
um, and make sure that's working. Actually, if you want to show them this, you can double check before you put everything back that it is indeed connected properly just to save putting the door back on and the handle doesn't work. Um, this needs to be slotted down in its little channel here. That can be tucked in. And then the only other thing to talk about before we pop this back on, you'll notice there's these little sort of foam rings on the clips that help prevent rattling. Sometimes those stick on the door panel, if you'll see that here. Uh, what you can do just as it's easy to knock those off, uh, they just pull right off. You'll slide it back over the clip. Sometimes they come with a little fuzz. And that is good to go, ready to pop this on, which the way we do that, the first thing, you want to line up your lock mechanism here. It just goes back through the hole. And we will pop this top row of clips in. You can see this is all aligned. Everything's basically lined up and then that will just get pulled inwards. So that's all lined up. And we will go down and do the clips. Um, what you can do is you can kind of feel that everything's lined up before you push it in. If there's a big gap here before you're applying any additional pressure, it means the clips aren't lined up and you can kind of look in the side crevice, see what's going on there. Um, in this case, we can tell from this gap that it is lined up and we'll just go around the door panel and pop those into place. It does just take that quick hit. You can use the palm of your hand. And from here, we just need to put the five Torx T20 screws back in. Um, in this case, we have ours here. Uh, that, does, that didn't come out for us initially. That is hanging out now. Um, so I'll show you guys. Uh, of course, it's gonna be difficult on camera. So we'll grab that out now, since I was hanging out with the door panel. Um, you could have got that out previously, but yeah, we'll just go through. It's the five screws. I'm gonna put those in, not gonna make you watch me screw that in as that's boring for you guys. And we'll talk about the proper way to get this handle cover back. All right, so the first thing we have to do after putting the five T20 screws back in is pop this little cover back on. It does have an upper and lower orientation. The bottom, so towards the ground, has this little tab here, which you'll just slot in. And then the top clips into place. And then we come back to this pull handle here. So there is this series of metal clips. And they may stick on the car side, they may stick on this. Either way is okay. Um, you just note the orientation is important if you move them to one side or the other. Um, it is not a universal style fit where it can go either way. Um, so what I like to do, you start at the bottom, this latches into here. So this kind of goes in, this will line up with this metal clip here, and then these guys will all line onto these plastic tabs. So, and again, one of the easiest things to do visually as you're lining things up. And there's gonna be some resistance down at the bottom. Just make sure everything's lined up properly and then you can go through and apply pressure onto it. And if you see a gap anywhere, just using your thumbs pinch down, you can feel it all lock into place. And when that's back on properly, you'll have a perfect seam just like factory. You are done with this front door and ready to move on to, I think we're gonna do the rear door next and then we'll tackle that center channel. All right, so we are moved on to the rear door here. Um, and again, we have two screws behind this pull handle. And then there's actually just one screw on the bottom and it does not appear we have any screw over here. So it's gonna be a total of three screws holding this on. Um, everything about that process is going to be identical to the front. So what I'm going to do is get those out and we'll jump forward and I'll show you the very slight difference in popping the panel off. We have our three Torx T20 screws removed and it's time to pop this off. Same thing, series of clips running around the outside. So you'll just want to come in, find where it is. If you're not getting it to pop where you went in, you may just be a little too far from one to get the flex that you need. 
Sometimes they're tight that first time through as well. There we go. So from there, you can just kind of go around with your hands. There's one tight one up here. Um, let's see. So actually, what you'll probably want to do, there's one up here and the panel's in two pieces, so you want to come back in. Like that. So again, same thing as the front door. We're gonna pull directly outwards as there's a series of clips running at the top. Lift off. And this is actually good that this happened. I wanna show you guys this. This stayed on the panel. So if that comes off, if you wanna come over here and show them. So this does have a slot on the door where it lines up and just goes in, you can kind of get it lined up. You'll feel it lock into place. So same sort of thing going on here. The only difference that I want to talk about is you'll want to unplug the tweeter from the mid range and then take this door handle off here again. And then uh, it looks like this one's a little bit tighter. Okay, so the rear door, we are actually gonna remove the wiring as it's just one clip and one connection. So if you wanna come here, there's this white clip. You can do this with your panel removal tool or by hand. I'll show you with the tool. So you'll take this open end here, get behind it, that pops out, and then there's just this one wiring connection there and then one for the handle down here that pulls directly down. And I'll show you how to plug those back in, but we can just put this panel to the side and then we will get to the mid range and I'll show you on the bench how to get to this tweeter. So with the door panel off, it is now time to get our factory mid range out. Same thing as the front door. Uh, we just unplug that wiring. You can actually, we're gonna route this a little differently. So you can see it's just kinda clipped in over here. We'll just move that wiring out and around there. And then this comes out with three Torx T20 bits again. Or I should say Torx T20 head screws, technically. But just trying to remind you guys what tool we want to be using. And then same thing as the front. Uh, we actually, funny enough, literally just got the overnight shipment of these in. Uh, so this is the new gasket I was talking about uh, that, you know, referencing on the front install. So you can see it's just this full form gasket on the rear, uh, meaning there's no little ring or anything for you to play around with there. We are still gonna pull this wiring through this vapor barrier. Uh, you'll just do that right here. Uh, there's an opening that you can feel. There's a little hole right where my finger is, we're going to pull it through there. And for the sake of time, since you saw this, us do that in the front panel, we're going to jump to where I have this screwed in. Um, and then we're actually going to take a second and show you how to install that rear tweeter in the door panel. With the bath sound mid-range snug down here, um, we have the wiring ran through. Again, there's a little hole you'll be able to feel in the vapor barrier here. Same as the front, you'll just pull this back. That black adhesive they use is super tacky. It'll stick right back down, form a perfect seal again. We have that wiring pulled snug, so there's no slack back there to catch on anything. Um, and then to the factory wiring, so this is the factory mid-range plug. Uh, we are plugged into that with our bath sound mid-range. 
Um, the wiring will sort of end up sitting like this. This will run over to the tweeter, which is attached to the door panel. Uh, the couple things I just wanted to talk about that we need to avoid, there is a screw that goes in here, so you don't want the wiring in front of that. You don't want it in front of the mid-range, that's a no-go. So just kind of in this slot here, or if you decide to run it around on this side, just watch out for the door panel clip. Um, I like running it over here. That gives us a little more room to work with, um, and then you don't risk breaking a clip as you'll immediately know if that's blocked. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna show you how to pop the tweeter into our door panel, and then we'll get this rear door installation buttoned up. So the tweeter in the rear door is in the door panel itself, and you could do this on your bench if it's a little easier. Um, so to get access to that, there's a couple things to do. You just slide this felt up over there and off over here, and that will give us access. Um, the factory wiring and capacitor harness is just sort of in here. It just pops out. Come around over to the tweeter, which there's all these little channels the wiring is in. So you kind of get that out of the way. And then it's not in there that tight. So again, you don't want to yank yank on the wiring to the point where you damage the tweeter if you have any uh, goals for that, but it just comes out. And we will grab our Bav Sound tweeter, which is a perfect fit into that housing. So you'll just line that up here. We'll run the wiring out of the same side. Be a little tricky to get it to pop directly. Just you want to go just straight down as you do it, or as straight as you can. It's probably hard to see on camera as I'm blocking it with my hands. And that is in place. So we'll take our wiring out this same channel there and kind of fiddle with that, which holds the tweeter from rotating, and bring it over here. All right. So. Again, like we talked about in the front, if you're watching this, uh, you know, kind of after early 2020, um, this is going to be built into the tweeter. Uh, right now it's a separate harness. Uh, this is the capacitor harness, same as the factor we just removed from here. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And then in the same place as the factory, there's this little set of mounts here, um, which this, you can just slide it in. We want to be careful. Um, it's going to be hard to show, but you know, there is connections to a board here, uh, but it, you know, so just be delicate with it, but just in those same tracks, we can just go ahead and slide that tweeter into there, or excuse me, tweeter harness, I should say that inline filter harness. So that's secure. Then we'll take this wiring and just go ahead and tuck it in back here and then put our foam back in place. There's a little slot there. This goes around here and we are ready to install the door panel again. So it is time to put the wiring and door panel back on. So we'll start off. Um, I just want to talk about it now. I'm going to show it again later. Make sure you plug this tweeter in with the amount of slack. It's gonna be one of the last things we'll do. Uh, but obviously that is a bad day if you forget to do that. So we'll come in and it's gonna be hard to see. We're plugging into the factory. There's a window switch right here. Just clips into place. Then we have that factory wiring plug. Again, just pops into place there. We'll bring over the door handle. Same as the front. A little bit. There you go. And you can check the function. Again, if you reach down, where is that on this? There it is. Yep, that is latched in where it needs to be. You can tuck that back in. Um, this has one wiring clip like we talked about that pops in. We'll plug our tweeter in here. And then this would be the time where you could check and make sure that everything's playing how it should. Um, we have already done that before filming. Um, 
and it is now time to pop it back on. If you can, I just wanna show in here. So with all of our wiring plugged in, including this tweeter wiring, I just wanna talk about it and make sure as we're putting this forward onto the door panel, make sure that doesn't get put in front of the mid-range. You can verify visually through the grill on the door as you go on before you pop everything in. Uh, but basically you can just guide it either as you're going on or before or a combination of both and just make sure that kind of sits off to the side here. So we'll go up here and line up our door lock. And then same as the front, we'll get all of these lined up. Once that's in place, you can just kind of pinch with your hands, feel all those lock in. And then, you know, again on video, this will be hard to see, verify visually through the grill that the wiring didn't pull in front of the mid-range. And then we'll just go through here and line up the clips. And that is back on. We'll put in our three Torx T20 bolts and you are good to go. It's now time to get the center channel out, which is hidden below this grill. And this whole plastic piece here comes out. It's held in by a series of clips running around the outside perimeter. And just with our plastic panel removal tool, we're just gonna come in and get those to release. So you kind of work your way into that edge there. And then pry upwards and then work your way around the outside as those release. Of course be careful around your screen. It would be a bummer to put any scratches on that. And then it just pops out and so okay so this design actually has it's just these one two three four five clips in it and then it latches in at the back. So you'll pry on this leading edge. Once those pop, it will just slide out towards you. So with the grill removed, uh, it is now time to get out these five bolts holding in the tweeter and mid-range. Uh, same as the rest of the vehicle, we're gonna be using the Torx T20. The one thing that's gonna be different, we're gonna use our angle driver just as there's not the clearance from here to the windshield to get in our full length screwdriver. So we'll just go ahead and remove these. And rather than making you watch this, you will join us back in a second with these out and I'll talk about putting the BAV sound units in. So with the five T20 head screws removed, it's time to take out the mid-range and tweeter. So we'll go ahead and lift the mid-range first. And then the plugs up here can be a little tight. They just pull directly out. Um, so that will come out. And then our tweeter, and you can see, same as ours is about to have, it has this little filter harness beneath it. So we will grab our Bav sound tweeter here. That filter harness goes below it into the same place as the factory, and then we'll run the wiring through that same channel just so that everything is flush there. And uh, that's that will sit down. We'll get the screws in just a second. We'll grab our mid-range. Now, the one thing I wanna talk about for this location, we include this nice decorative um, rubber piece for the magnet. It is just decorative. In this case, clearance is tight with the wiring. So we're gonna remove that and we will get this plugged in. You can be careful not to damage the cone. You can very lightly set it. We'll plug in the wiring from the amp and then our tweeter. Tuck this wiring down below. And get this situated. So, like so. And uh, now I just wanna show you screwing the mid-range into place just as we really wanna make sure, you can see there's these three tabs with the wiring and everything else beneath it. As you push down, this should be firmly planted on here before you're screwing it down. If as you're screwing down the mid-range, 
one of these tabs is bending out of shape or you're moving it, that means the wiring or something beneath the mid-range is preventing it from sitting flush and you need to correct that. As if you crank down on that screw and it bends this tab, that's gonna create distortion in the mid-range and damage it pretty much instantly. So we wanna avoid that. Um, with that in place, we'll just take our three screws, go in a circular pattern just till it's snug. You don't need to go tight. And if you see any flex on these ears, resituate everything and make sure that it's sitting flush and then try again. All right, so I really just wanna emphasize here again, we just need to go snug on all these screws and just, you know, here, just using this front a little bit, just until they're snug. Um, if you're all the way out at the end of the ratchet applying full force, that's way too tight. You both risk damaging the speaker as well as stripping out the plastic threads in here. So again, just using the, my fingertip, just snug like that. And again, go in a star pattern. If you're seeing any flex on the ears of these especially the mid-range speaker, um, make sure to go back in, get that wiring sitting flush as something isn't right. Now, we have everything plugged in. It's all snugged down. So we're gonna grab this grill. Again, there's these little tabs that slide in at the front and then the clips that lock it into place. So you'll slide that in towards the front of the vehicle. And then we will come around and push down to get the clips locking in. It can take a little force there as you're seeing. And boom, good as factory and you are ready to enjoy that great sound in your X2. We have our full bath sound upgrade installed in the X2 now, and it's time to finally sample the improvement that you're getting. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to talk through the settings, um, both on the radio that you should be using, as well as your phone, and the break-in period that you're gonna experience. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the break-in period. There is about a 10 hour uh, break in on these mid-range and tweeters where you are going to notice them smooth out over time it's going to be it's not going to be as drastic as if you're doing the subwoofers as well as far as the difference that you will get but it does make a difference um, during that time and really through the life of the speakers you just want to make sure to avoid any sort of distortion or anything of that nature um, so now what we want to do is go into the car and talk about the audio settings that you have available. This is in the media slash radio section on the car. And then you'll notice down at the bottom below everything else, we have the tone settings. Um, we really want this pretty flat across the board, balance fader, um, etc. You can go up or down, you know, two to three notches on treble or bass to your ear, but going much past that, the factory radio doesn't do a good job of managing the EQ and you, you'll just introduce distortion. Um, in the volume settings, we recommend turning speed volume all the way off as that doesn't just increase volume with speed, that actually again changes the EQ. Um, and then, you know, PDC, gong, etc., cetera, uh, is all up to your personal preference. Um, that's all that we have here. Uh, so. With that said, uh, the one other thing I wanted to touch on, if you're you know, going through this video, you think you're gonna install just half of the speakers in the car and then just put the balance full left or full right, that's not a good way to sample things. Um, it's sort of akin to putting two Super Sport tires on the left-hand side of your car, leaving the factory all seasons on the right, and then going out to see the handling difference. You will notice a change, but it's not gonna give you an accurate representation of the actual performance difference that you're gonna get. Um, and then the only other thing to talk about in conjunction with the EQ settings in the vehicle is on your phone, you wanna also make sure there's no EQ in any of the apps you're using. Um, the Apple iPhone itself has it built in. There's one on Android. It's gonna be a little different on every app. It's too complex for me to go in and discuss that. But, you know, just kinda stray away from that in general as that's gonna introduce distortion. Beyond that, enjoy these audio upgrades, enjoy the transformed sound in your X2, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>